Okay, right, so welcome to this uh, next video uh, in this uh, playlist on probability. So we are going to try and work out the PDF of this new random variable R, which is basically this old random variable, and then we're acting this function T, which is uh, both injective and differentiable, basically, in all directions are on these uh, ordered triplets. And uh, now what we're going to try and work out is what the PDF of this random variable is. So, uh, first thing to note is that if you have a point uh, in the codomain which has no associated point in uh, the domain, i.e. it has no point in the domain which is mapped onto it, then we'll just define the PDF there to be zero. So that's pretty intuitive. Now let's take a point. So take a point uh, x bar, y bar, z bar, which does it does have a uh, have a point in the codomain in the sorry in the domain which was mapped onto it. So its inverse image, let's say, is x, y, and z. Right. So if we if we want to know what the uh, PDF of this new random variable is, which we might call the random variable uh, x bar, y bar, z bar, that would make sense. So we'll call the random variable r x bar, y bar, z bar as a function of uh, little x bar, little y bar, little z bar. If we want to know what that is, well, all we know is the what we're going to define this to be equal to, which is that if you multiply it by delta x bar, delta y bar, delta z bar, so uh, you, if you take some little box around this point, so here's the point x bar, y bar, z bar, if you construct a little box here of side lengths delta x bar, uh, delta y bar, and delta z bar, and you want to know what is the probability that you're within that box, then the PDF at this point x bar, y bar, z bar, times the volume of this little box, so delta x bar times delta y bar times delta z bar, that should equal the probability that it's in that box. So now what we need to do is take this box back uh, into uh, this probability space. So we need to take its inverse image in this probability space, work out, uh, we know what the inverse image of the point is, it goes to the point x, y, z. What we need to work out is what's the volume of this box at this point x, y, z. So it might become, it might no longer look like a box, it might become a parallelogram uh, or, or a 3D version of the parallelogram, which is why we spent so long discussing how to take volumes of such things uh, in the previous video. Okay, uh, so um, basically what we have to do is we have to invert this, uh, we have to turn this, we have to take this box back into what it is in this, uh, in this original random variable, and then we use the definition of the PDF on there to say that the probability that you're within this uh, shape here is uh, the area of that shape times the uh, probability density function evaluated at that point x, y, z, which is the pre-image of the point x bar, y bar, z bar. Okay, so how are we going to find the uh, volume of that uh, box there? Well, basically, uh, uh, this this is the point where we use Jacobians. Okay, uh, so let's begin our discussion of Jacobians. So now we're going to step away from the probability problem for a second, and we're going to discuss Jacobians. So it's easier, it is easier, just in the case of bivariate uh, transformations, it's easier to go forward than it is to go backwards. So um, if we imagine we have a function f, which is mapping, uh, which is mapping uh, r3 onto r3, Okay, and it's um, so it ascribes to every point, every ordered triplet of real numbers, another ordered triplet over here. So this is R three, and this is R three over here. Okay, and we take this point x y z, let's say, and we take a tiny little box now, a tiny little cube of side lengths delta x, delta y, and delta z, and we want to know, basically, how does that transform into here? So what's the area of this box going to be in here? Which is the We're all asking the opposite question in this case. We're asking to go the other way. But basically, from this, we'll be able to get the other way in the uh, same way as we did in the uh, previous uh, video. Okay, so the, uh, sorry, in the previous discussion of bivariate uh, random variable transformations. Okay, so the way that we do this is we transform these vectors that span this box, basically. Uh, so uh, this vector down here is the vector delta x, 0, 0. So it's, you make the change delta x in the x direction, then you change y and z uh, by nothing, basically. Then we've got the vector, uh, this one back here, which is delta y in the y direction, and then 0 in the x direction, and 0 in the z direction. 
And then finally, we've got this vector here, which is going vertically upwards, which is zero in the x direction, zero in the y direction, and then delta z in the z direction. So basically, we've got these three vectors uh, which are pointing pointing uh, in uh, the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction, with modulus delta x, delta y, and delta z respectively. And these vectors span this box. So basically, if we want to find out what this, the image of this box is over here, firstly, let's say the point x bar, y bar, z bar is the image of the point x, y, z. So if I take f of this ordered pair, it maps you out x bar, y bar, z bar. Basically, what we need to do is transform all three of these vectors into uh, into this uh, codomain over here, and we'll get three vectors out, basically, like that, let's say. And uh, the this box, what we're going to say this box is transformed onto, it's going to be transformed onto the shape, which is the span, uh, spanned by those uh, three vectors, which will probably look something like a three-dimensional parallelogram like that, rather than a box anymore. And then, in the previous videos uh, on uh, volumes and hypervolumes, we discussed how to find the volume of a hyper of a um, of a three-dimensional parallelogram like that. Uh, you basically put the three vectors, the three vectors that are spanning this parallelogram like thing, uh, and uh, you put them into a matrix alongside one another. Take the determinant of that matrix and take the absolute value of that determinant. Right, so that's our action plan basically. So, what we now need to discuss is how to transform these vectors into uh, into uh, what they are over in this, spa in this space over here. So let's do that now. Right, so another piece of paper. Okay, so uh, this is an important topic in, on its own. So if you have a function f which is mapping r3 onto r3, then we've already discussed how uh, you can break this up into components. So it's going to map a point x, y, z, and it's going to map it onto x bar, which is a function of x, y, and z, potentially. It's going to map it onto y bar, which is a function of x, y, and z, potentially. And it's going to map it onto z bar, which is a function of x, y, and z, potentially. So these are the three components of this ordered triplet of real numbers. So we can split this function from R3 to R3 up into three uh, functions where we've just got a real valued function. So x bar is a real value, uh, sorry, it's a, well, it's a function from R3 onto R, so it is a real valued function of a three-dimensional vector space. And those functions are simpler than uh, this function. Uh, this Basically, what I'm saying is that we can think of this as being made up of three functions which map the real uh, that map the uh, three-dimensional real vector space onto the real line, basically. Okay, so that firstly simplifies matters. Now, if we want to take, if we take uh, some point in here, so let's say x, y, and z here, some point, so that's just an ordered uh, triplet in R3, and we are mapping it on to some other point, x bar, y bar, z bar, and we take some tiny little vector here, so let's say this is some tiny little vector v, uh, and we want to know what is the tra that vector transformed onto over here, then uh, the way that you do it is, let's say the vector v has uh, components, it's got uh, x component vx, in fact let's just say v1, y component v2, and z component v3. So uh, v1 is its uh, component in the x direction, v2 is its component in the y direction, and v3 is its component in the z direction. Okay, and we want to transform, uh, we want to know what does this get transformed onto in uh, this uh, space, basically, when you act it on the function, f, uh, when you act the function f, what is this tiny little vector transformed onto? Well, the way that you do that is you say, okay, we know this point x, y, and z is mapped onto x bar, y bar, z bar. Far, this point here, the vector goes from one point to another point, this tiny little vector, and this point, this second point it goes to is x plus v1, so you add the uh, difference in the x component, then you add 
y to the difference in the y component, so y plus v2, then you add z to the difference in the z component, so you get z plus v3. So basically, that point, the two points that the vector goes between, is uh, this point x, y, and z, and this point over here. So, if we map this point onto x bar, y bar, z bar, and we figure out what this point uh, here is mapped onto by f, then this vector, we could think of this vector as being just uh, transformed onto the, um, the difference between those two points, basically. Okay, so all we need to figure out is what is uh, this point here mapped onto by the function f. Okay, so uh, this point, uh, the function f ascribes this thing here to every uh, point uh, in here. Uh, sorry, every point x, y, z, it ascribes this. So this point here, here, um, this is going to be, and firstly let me just, uh, to make it more obvious, let me expand what this is here. This really should have been, this point here should have been written as x bar as a function of x, y, z, then it should have been y bar as a function of x, y, and z. Then it should have been z bar as a function of x, y, and z. Okay? So that's that point there, this original point. So x, y, z is mapped onto this point here. And now this point here is going to be mapped onto, in the same spirit, it's going to be mapped onto x bar of now, we substitute in x plus v1, y plus v2, z plus v3. Then uh, the y component is y... Uh, evaluated at x plus v1, y plus v2, z plus v3. Uh, and then finally, uh, sorry, end of brackets there, and then finally we get y bar, that should have been, z bar, which is a function of x plus v1, y plus v2, z plus v3. So that's that point there. So let me get my highlighters out to... Right, so this, this great big point here is this point here. Okay, oh dear, that's made a horrible mess. Uh and uh, this point was this point here. So this new vector is the difference between these two points. So this, the, the vector that this is transformed onto, should I, should I call that, um, I would call it v-bar, but of course we can't call it v-bar because it would make no sense. In fact, let's do, let's do it anyway. Let's call it v-bar, and then let's put the vector symbol above it. Okay, uh, so, so this is going to be the difference between this point and this point. So it's going to be x-bar evaluated at x plus v1, y plus v2, z plus v3. Okay, z plus v3. Minus x-bar evaluated at x, y, and z. And then y-bar evaluated at x plus v1 y plus v2, z plus v3, minus y bar evaluated at x and y, so we're just z, uh, so we're just subtracting this component from this, and then finally, the final component, which is z bar evaluated at x plus v1, y plus v2, z plus v3, minus uh, the z component over here, which is z bar evaluated at x, y, and z, Okay, so that is our transformed vector. However, if this v1 and this v2 and v3 are very, very, very small, then these these things here, this let's say this one here, this can be approximated by um, how much you change x bar, so the partial derivative x bar in the direction x times how much you change it by. So that overall gives you how much this changes, uh, because this is asking you, this is saying basically, you change uh, x, y, z, so change the point x, y, z, um, change the point x, y, z by v1, v2, v3. How much does the x bar coordinate over here change, is what that, that is asking. And basically, if v1 is very, very small, it changes by uh, the amount that x bar would change if you change x solely by some tiny amount, times that tiny amount, which will tell you how much it changes for that tiny, uh, how much it changes for the change in x equal to v1, plus the change in x bar, uh, uh, the partial derivative of x bar with respect to y, times how much you change y by, plus the partial derivative of z bar, sorry, no, x bar, with respect to z, times how much you change z. 
So that basically is what this component is approximately equal to, providing these vectors are very, very small. Uh, provide, sorry, providing these components, v1, v2, v3, are very, very small. That is approximately equal to that. And in a similar spirit, we can expand all of these ones out. So um, let me go on. Let me get some more paper. So basically, what this vector becomes, we can rewrite this vector here, v bar bar, uh, the, sorry, v bar, as being equal to, uh, let's say, uh, the partial of x bar with respect to x, so I'm just putting this in, uh, v1, plus the partial of x bar with respect to y, v2, plus the partial of x bar with respect to z, v3, and then uh, replace this one now. It's the partial of y bar with respect to x, so how much it changes for a single change in x times how much you change x by, uh, plus uh, the partial of y bar with respect to y, so how much it changes for a, 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 the ratio between the change in y bar and the change in y where you just change y times how much you change y by, plus the partial of y bar with respect to z, um, v3, so how much you change z by. And then finally, we just put in del z bar del x, so how much z bar changes for a change in x, uh, times by how much you change x. So the ratio, this is the ratio between how much uh, z bar changes if you change x, and then to turn it back into an absolute amount by which you change uh, x bar, uh, z bar rather, you need to ch times it by how much x changes. And then you add it to the partial of z bar with respect to y times the change in y plus the partial of z bar with respect to z times v3. Okay, right. Uh, but there's a very nice way, basically, of viewing what that is, which is this looks awfully like uh, a matrix multiplied by a vector. The vector looks like v1, v2, v3, and then it looks like a matrix, basically, because this is just a great big vector. This is it. This is a uh, a free component vector. This is the first component, all of these things added together. This is the second component, this is the third component, but this looks as though it was formed perfectly from the partial of x bar with respect to x, uh, the partial of y bar with respect to y, and now I'm drawing a matrix basically, sorry, that should not be that, that should be the partial of x bar with respect to y the partial of x bar with respect to z. So I'm making a matrix. I'm just taking these terms here and putting them into the row of a matrix, the first row of a matrix. Now the second row of the matrix is going to be del y del x bar del x, del y bar del y, del y bar del z, so the partial derivative y bar with respect to z, the partial derivative of z bar with respect to x, and the partial derivative of z bar with respect to y, the partial derivative of z bar with respect to uh, z here. Okay. And then uh, to turn it into that, what we'd have to do is multiply that matrix by v1, v2, v3. So it looks as though we can get the transformed vector, our v bar. Uh, our v bar vector, by multiplying our original vector v here by this matrix of partial derivatives. Um, uh, and just note uh, that if you do multiply this out, you multiply this one by this one, you add it to this one times this one, you add it to this one times this one, which gives you that first row, and you go on, this one multiplied by this one, plus this one multiplied by this one, this one multiplied by this one, that gives you the second row, and then finally you go on with the third row, and it all works very, very beautifully. So that's a very nice way of transforming vectors between these, um, between these two... Um, two spaces. So if you take a vector in here and you want to know what is its transforma transformed vector in here, you take that vector and multiply it by this matrix of partial derivatives. And of course, all these partial derivatives are evaluated at that point x, y, z. Okay, uh, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video.